right, so this is Scott Converse. I'm the publisher of the Longmont Observer, and with me today I've got Ashley Keltner, who is the director of volunteers for uh, the I Have a Dream Foundation. And I also have with me Annette Taylor, who is an ambassador from the I Have a Dream Foundation. So um, why don't you guys tell me a little bit about what it is that you guys do? What is, what is the I Have a Dream Foundation and what's it about? Well, we are a local nonprofit. We've been here in Boulder County for 28 years. We're an educational enhancement program for low-income children. And what our mission is, is to help kids to stay in school, graduate from high school, and go on to post-secondary education. That's, a, that's pretty simple. <laughs> It sounds that way, and when we're providing services for these students from low-income communities and the Boulder, Longmont, Lafayette, and Carbon Valley communities, it's 11 years of really intense services and support that we provide them. And then, additionally, when they graduate from high school, we give each student a $10,000 tuition assistance oh, scholarship. Wow. So I would say it sounds simple, and there's a lot of love and passion that goes into this. Ah, okay. I think the key to the success of our program has been that we start with children when they're in second grade, and we stay with them throughout the whole educational experience through high school, through college. And so they always have caring adults that are helping them. If things start going off track, um, they have um, a program director that works with the class, and that, that person will always help them to continue to do well with their education and any uh, personal issues that come up. We work very closely with the families. Our families are um, very dedicated to the program. When we have funding for a class to start, we put the word out through either housing or the school districts, Boulder Valley and St. Vrain, and uh, parents then have the opportunity to sign their kids up for the program, but they have to also be really in support with the mission that they want their kids to stay in school, graduate high school, and go on to post-secondary education. So we've had really great success. 90% of our children are graduating from high school, and about 85% go on to post-secondary education. Wow. Yeah, that is, those are fantastic numbers. So what are some of the programs that you guys have got? You've, you've talked a little bit about Is that the primary thing you do, or do you have other programs? Um, our primary program really would be um, the after-school um, tutoring program. We work with, um, we actually have staff right at the schools after school with a lot of volunteers and I should say our program is so dependent on the generosity of volunteers that come in and work with the kids, uh, our dreamer scholars year after year and help make this possible. This is our going on our 29th year here in Boulder County. And so um, that is critical to get the homework done, to improve reading skills, math skills, science skills. We have a, a lot of tutors. We have um, a huge AmeriCorps program that supports the I Have a Dream Foundation program, internships from the different uh, schools, Front Range and CU, all these people are helping to tutor kids. So mm -hmm. when they're younger, when they're in second grade, it's uh, fairly straightforward. But as the kids get into high school, then they need specialized tutoring. So we're able to have people come in and do that mm -hmm. on a volunteer basis. During the summer, we also take the place of the school day because there's a lot of learning gaps that happen during those few months that the students are not in school. So we take the place of the school day and do a full enrichment program from 8 a.m. until about 3 or 3.30 p.m. to make sure that they're still maintaining the level of academic support that they got over the course of the school year. And then I would say one other key program that we run is our mentor program. So these students, uh, being from low-income communities, really compete for adult attention a lot of the time in their lives. They compete for their teacher's attention in the classroom, in our after-school program, though we have quite a few volunteers, they're always clamoring for adult attention, whether it be our program staff or volunteers. And then even in their families, they're competing for adult attention, not only with their siblings, but for all of the many things that are on these parents' plates in order to be able to take care of their kiddos, put a roof over their head, put food on the table. The students really need another supportive adult in their life. So we also run a mentor program internally where adults are matched one-on-one -on -one with a student for a year minimum doing fun things twice a month uh, whether it be baking cookies at their home or flying a kite in the park or something really grandiose like going to a Rockies game. Mm -hmm. 
So how do you find these these mentors and volunteers? Is that partly why we're That's talking? partly why, <laughs> yes. <laughs> we want to I suspected as much. <laughs> We'd like to call the Longmont community especially to help us and step forward and um, find out more about our mentor program. We have a really great website and uh, a lot of questions could be answered that way or people could give Ashley or her team a call what is just that website? to find out more about it. It's um, ihadboulder.org. Say it again. ihadboulder.org, I-H-A-D, boulder, one word, dot org. Okay, I thought that's what I heard, but yes. I wanted to make sure. Yes, thank yes. you. So, yes, yeah. and it's a, it's a wonderful experience, and it's so important for the Dreamer Scholars and their families, but it's also just so enriching for the volunteers. Over the years, I've just been amazed at how um, the volunteers that mentor or tutor, how, how much it's enriched their lives as well. And I think it's a great experience. People would really enjoy it. We have a great training program before you go into it. And we have certainly a really good infrastructure set up to support the mentors as, as they're working with their students. It's very easy to volunteer with I Have a Dream. Ashley makes it very easy. <laughs> we do our best, that's for sure. <laughs> what kind of things do you wish um, people knew about your organization that they don't now? What word would you like to get out? Yeah, one thing that I would love to say is when you look at our mentor program or even volunteering on paper, it's easy to say, gosh, I, I'm so busy. How would I make this fit into my life? I already have all these other things. And what I would love for people to know is that once they meet the kids, they will know instantly how it fits into their lives because mm. these kids are just such amazing, kind, energetic, um, big-hearted individuals with huge dreams, but they really enjoy the simple things. And so it may seem like it could take a lot of time to go and pick up a child and take them for an activity, but when they come back to our program day after day, week after week, and talk amongst each other about what it is they're doing with their mentor or what it uh, what a great experience they had with a program volunteer. They're relishing over the little things, mm -hmm. going and getting an ice cream, mm -hmm. getting to meet their mentor's dog and get to play with the dog and walk the dog. So it's really easy to fit this in. And I think it's just a matter of getting these potential volunteers in front of our kiddos so they can see just how amazing these young people are. Fantastic. A, real, a really great time to uh, visit the program can be during the summer months when we have our summer programs going. We work with two schools here in Longmont, that's Trail Ridge Middle School and then Timberline K through H. And if uh, anybody wanted to maybe connect with Ashley and her team, we could arrange just to have a visit. Um, we do regular site visits throughout the year, but if anybody just wanted to see the program in action, I'm sure during the summer we could kind of figure that out and have people come over. And I think something that's always struck me too about the Dreamer Scholars, the children, is that um, we live here in this beautiful, gorgeous place and a lot of the kids have never even really been to the mountains or out for a hike or maybe down to Denver. And so that's something, I mean, the mentors really connect with the students and they just open up this whole new avenue, this um, this whole new support group for the, the children and how important it is for all of us to have networks. And as you're a child and as you're going into high school, college years, just how important that is to have people on your side. So talk, let's talk a little bit about funding. How do you fund this? And how do um, you raise money? And how can people help? That's a great question. Uh, we have quite a few events that we put on throughout the year. We are most known for our annual luncheon, which usually takes place in September or October. So that will be coming up this fall. And we recently had our Longmont breakfast. Mm -hmm. And so these are free events for individuals to attend where they can learn more about our program and hear the impact not only from the Dreamer perspective and their families, but they also get to hear the impact on the lives of donors, the lives of volunteers, and other individuals who've become engaged in our organization. And I think it's a great way for people to really learn about what we do. And it's really hard to walk away from that event not opening up pocketbooks to give a little bit to these kids. Um, 
we also rely on the community, not just individuals, but local community foundations, private foundations as well. We do receive quite a bit of grant funding. Um, our grant writer, Kristen Pazulski, is amazing mm -hmm. at letting these different granting organizations know just how great our program is and the results that we're bringing in. Um, so we do have diversified funding, but I will say the vast majority comes from caring individuals. And one thing that is of note is that we are a child care contribution recipient. So should an individual, and this is something to consult the website about because it goes into great detail, but should an individual choose to donate up to a certain amount, they are eligible for a child care contribution credit, which then makes their tax refund look a lot better. <laughs> and this is not available at all nonprofits. So right. we are a very fortunate recipient of that. Yeah. Great. So, what are some of the most urgent needs you've got going on right now? What are you really? What's what's the? What are you looking for right now? Right. I think the mentor program. We have um, kids now in middle school here, in Longmont, and usually we do like to have people paired before they get into the high school age because, at that point, students sometimes become too busy with extracurricular or other activities and then aren't as receptive to having a mentor. So these last couple of years in middle school, it's really important if we can get more people uh, paired up, more mentors for our Dreamer Scholars here in Longmont. Yeah. That to me okay. is an urgent need. Okay. Yes, we've got just over 50 students in the Longmont area who are in need of a mentor. Mm -hmm. and I. So you need 50 mm -hmm. mentors right yes. now? We do. They need 50 mentors. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if most people remember their middle school years. Um, but I would say for quite a few of us, those were tumultuous years. Yeah. So having a mentor now is critical. Um, we can always use funding to support our kids. It takes over a million dollars to carry a cohort or class of students from first grade all the way through high school graduation and then awarding each a $10,000 uh, tuition assistance scholarship. So that's um, always something that we're looking for to continue to grow the support that we can provide each student. Mm -hmm. So anything else that you would like people here in Longmont to know about the I Have a Dream Foundation? I'd love for them mm -hmm. to know that we're here. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many times I go out into the community and introduce I Have a Dream and ask how many people have heard about us and what we do, and uh, many people have not still, despite us being here nearly 30 years. Mm -hmm. So I'm ready for the community to know that we're here mm -hmm. and get excited about working with our kids and seeing the investment that we're making in the future of Longmont. Mm -hmm. All right. We've had two classes here prior, one at Casa de la Esperanza and one at Columbine Elementary. That's where they started. and. What's so rewarding for me now is I'm, those children are now through high school, college, and they're out in careers. And uh, I see them around the community and they're contributing to the community and they're trying to help others. We do ask that our dreamers uh, look at giving back to the I Have a Dream Foundation. Some are serving on the board or there's an emerging leader board. They're helping in their community to lift other people up. So it's just such a great thing for the community. All right. Well, Ashley, Annette, I want to thank you very much for visiting with us here at the Longmont Observer today. Oh, thank you, Scott. And again, what's Scott. your website one more time? Go ahead. <laughs> it's ihadboulder.org. That's I-H-A-D-B-O-U-L-D-E-R dot O-R-G. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank Thanks, you for Scott. watching. <laughs>